Okay, we've uh, we've got the steady rest locked down to the lay bit. We've got our travel set so that we can comfortably come in and machine that diameter. Now to set a steady rest, whether this be roller or uh, bronze tip or or um, uh, leather, um, it, it is a, a feel contact type of thing. And on the rollers here, I like to. Uh, put a little tension on my fingers and then I can feel the amount of drag that's on there. And that lock goes down when I'm happy with it. This roller here, I'm going to have to replace uh, sometime. It's got a little quick click on the surface there. Okay, what's important about setting these here is this is going to be locked down and when we move the shaft to the next position, that tailstock is not going to be on the lathe. So this true center of this position is going to be uh, detrimental for the next cut to hold the shaft in the exact same spot. Okay, we're happy with that and we're locked down. Okay, the first couple cuts are just to take off the, uh, the highs, making sure that we don't slam a bit too hard. And we'll sneak up onto it and then we double check to make sure that we have enough weld build on the whole diameter. Okay, we got 15 thousandths to go. Pretty well clear. One little spot in there. We got one there, one there. The rest of it looks good. Okay, uh, we do have just a couple of minor uh, Remnants is a uh, little edge of the weld there, a couple right there. Anyway, we, we done we do we've done better on our leading edge than we have on our trailing edge there. There's probably the biggest one there, and there's the biggest one there on the front, little spot there. But the big thing is we were able to maintain two and a half inches diameter all the way across here and we are going to have a nice bearing support here now. Alright. We've got that running zero. We're in here with the center where we're going to support the end of our shaft when we do the fit and face. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring in the roller so that we know we're supporting the roller. Straight. put our couple in together. Now this shaft is turning 450 RPMs right now, and uh, you can see what I mean about the uh, little lubrication on that gel run pad, turns nice and smooth. But when you got a true running, smooth running shaft, you don't take much to hold it in line. All right, we're spinning the shaft for a final inspection. 
and we got uh, like an inch, a uh, thou and a half there in the center. And uh, she's respectfully running the same all the way the full length here. We're ready to take her outside and package her up. Hey, there's your pop there, Bill. <laughs> put this in the uh, wood stove and we're going to bake all the oil right out of it. Two uh, bearing shelves right here in the in a tray here. Uh, we've wire wheeled uh, all the loose flake rust and that stuff off of it. And what we have here is some Harvey's gel rust remover. Uh, this is made uh, Harvey Universal, Torrance, California. And then they got a double eight hundred number there. And you know I don't know if they're still in business. This is some real old stuff, but it works terrific. Squeeze some of this out here and we just brush it around here. Almost kind of the same consistency as a uh, uh, paint stripper. We don't have a sandblaster yet, so this is kind of our substitute. At least while we have, we've <laughs> by the time we run out of these little samples here, <clears throat> just making sure we get it in the, each one of these keeper <clears throat> grooves for the, the Babbitt. All right, we're going to let that sit on a little bit, and then we just rinse them off with water. Okay, we finished uh, prepping the two shells there, and you can see that we've got them rust-free. And uh, we're going to get ready to make the... Uh, mold to pour the babbit in these two shells all right we uh we found a piece of pipe and it's already been faced off and we used it for something else in the hydraulic press but 
we're going to go ahead and set it up and this is uh, 23875 we're going to take it down to 2300 that will leave us a hundred thousandths per side undersized for our Babbitt finish because we're going to pour this one and then we're going to do a one shot bore on it and uh, so we're going to set it up and we're going to turn it so that this will be the sleeve on the inside and then we're going to go into the plasma cam and we're going to go ahead and create the, the caps on the ends so let's get it cut okay we want to get a, a cut to take on the whole outside here so what we've done is we've turned a little register there so that it locates the ID of the pipe there and the bell center takes care of this side here So this is the one we tacked here so we know it's square and the reason why we want to know it's square so that this track goes through the center of the casting here and uh, we'll be able to judge our side to side distance. And then we're going to go ahead and put a pair of clamps clamping it this way here. All right, it looks like we're ready to uh, start uh, getting our Babbitt pot ready, get ready to pour. Okay. What we have here is we have a, a, a dummy bore, which is smaller than the, the size that uh, we're going to actually have as a bearing. Uh, we want to cast it small, we're going to have it assembled, and we're going to bore it. So what I did is I took and I created a square, and it doesn't matter which way you set this, this is actually equal to being center line. The center of that bore is center of the bearing. Then we went ahead and we tacked, uh, we tacked this square so that we know that we can keep the straight line with our bore and we'll position this where we want and we're going to we'll, we'll smoke this put this in here clamp it in here preheat the we'll have this preheated probably most of the way before we clamp it clamp it we're going to pour it then we're going to dress the center line we're going to make two shims to go in here just so you always have room to tighten it up if you want to later then we're going to go ahead, and this has match marks already. We're going to put the cap on here. We'll bolt it down with the proper shim in there. We're going to pour it through the uh, zerk, zerk fitting hole here and pour the top half. Then we're going to take it apart, just clean it up, remove the piece, bolt it together for the final time, and go punch the bore in it. 